There's a famous quote by the Soviet leader in the 60s, um, Nikita Khrushchev, who said, in nuclear war, the survivors would envy the dead because it really would be sort of like that instantaneous, you know, um, evaporated, like you wouldn't even know what happened to you, right? Versus the survivors who, um, it, it, it's truly unimaginable what would happen to them. Do we know um, where the time. Russian like warheads are pointed in America? Do we have any idea of like what places they would try to hit? We can, we can, we can guess yeah. pretty well. I mean, New York my, City is not, not going to be spared. <laughs> no. But do you think they would try to hit population centers or uh, would they try to hit like military centers yeah, or both? Yeah, I mean, the, the argument is that they're supposed to be hitting military centers, but we do know from the declassified war planning in past decades that it was civilian centers. Yeah. If America's um, planning cities in Russia, at, you know, 25,000 or above, why would Russia not yeah, be comparing exactly. the same thing? Exactly. So, exactly. so hypothetically, tell me if, I, if I'm understanding this correctly. There could be some type of miscalculation or misinformation coming into Russia that yes. says, oh, America just launched yes. missiles. Yes. They respond. Yes. But America maybe didn't. Or maybe we did. But in this hypothetical, yep. let's say we didn't. Yep. They get bad information or their radars are wrong or their data is wrong. Yep. They then decide to shoot at us. Yep. Electricity would go out across pockets of America or the across entire country. Across the entire country, yep. And then from that point, within 30 minutes, nuclear warheads would then be exploding across America. Hypothetically, if they went off in New York City, 8, billion, or 8 million people on in Manhattan – would probably all be wiped out immediately. All of New York, the greater area of New York, would basically just be in fire. I imagine Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, D.C., any Houston. other major hub, yep. all decimated immediately. If you're someone that maybe lives in a rural area, you might be spared, potentially. Yep. Yep. But then they would have the fallout from no electricity, infrastructure gone, pure yep. anarchy. And, and radiation fallout, which would, um, if you're so, going back, I mentioned the Marshall Islands. This is where the United States tested. Where, where uh, is the Marshall new, Islands? The Marshall Islands are in smack, right smack in the middle of the Pacific. They're basically just, oh, you have a map? I have a map up here. Yeah, <laughs> they're just north of the equator Okay. and just west of the international date line. Okay. Um, I often tell people that if you draw a line from like the northernmost point of Australia to Hawaii, right smack in the middle of that line would be the Marshall Islands. Okay. It's a collection of 29 coral atolls um, that span an area of about, um, you know, a, a, a thousand miles wide, so I want to say almost a, a, a million square miles. And what, what, so what is an atoll? A, an atoll is um, not the same as an island, um, and what it is is it's actually a coral buildup on top of a remnant of an old volcano. Hmm. So volcanoes that are now underwater that basically have the rim... And then coral building up and, and sticking mm. out of the ocean. So it's uninhabitable. No one so, lives there. So no, people live. The the Marshall Islands in particular were um, inhabited. Um, estimates range from three to four, say 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and people have been living there for, for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, and they um, have a, a sort of colonial history i mean the last the japanese occupied the the marshall islands um during world war ii and then there were battles that were fought not just in the marshall islands but elsewhere in the pacific as well between uh, primarily the united states and and um japan uh so the Marshall Islands is where the U.S. the U.S. they were under the protection of um, the United States, according to a, a, a U.N. kind of established. Um, I think it was a treaty, something, a treaty uh, for the Pacific states, and the U.S. was supposed to provide their protection, 
And what happened instead is that within basically six months of the attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the U.S. was in the Marshall Islands asking the islanders to leave some of their islands in order to begin testing nuclear weapons there. Oh, wow. So that was in February of 1946. Um, there was a very famous meeting at uh, on Bikini Island, which is in Bikini Atoll, where um, a U.S. commander, his name was Ben Wyatt, went in and met with the islanders um, on a Sunday after church and asked them to leave their islands in order to um, help the United States basically to end all war, for the good of mankind and to end all wars. And um, the there was a fairly small indigenous population, obviously, um, and they had um, a king uh, for, for, for Bikini. His name was King Judah, and he answered, we will leave believing that everything is in the hands of God. And so they left in um, by March of 46, uh, and by July 1, the U.S. was testing weapons in Bikini Atoll. Wow. Uh, and the, 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 the really sad thing, it's a very long history, you know, decades of, of, of things that, that happened, um, but today people still don't live in Bikini Island. Wow. People still don't live. That's almost 80 years since the first test. And they're still testing there? There's no testing, no. Uh, the testing in the Marshall Islands lasted from 46 to 58. Um, that was 12 years. Over that time, since we talked about the energy yields of, of nuclear weapons, over that time, um, the U.S. basically tested the equivalent of 7,000 Hiroshima bombs, which over the course of 12 years is like testing 1.6 Hiroshima bombs every single day for 12 years. Wow. So really, really um, crazy. And then, so the radiation, the reason I started talking about this, the radiation, there's still radiation um, in Bikini Island. In fact, this was work that I've been involved uh, in with uh, colleagues and students at Columbia University. There's still radiation that in, you know, our assessment is that uh, a multi-generational community should not live there full time today, again, now, you know, almost 80 years later. And when the U.S. was testing, there was one particular test, the Bravo test, the one that I mentioned, thousand times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. But it wasn't just that that was a really powerful test. It was also that the winds the day of the test were such that the fallout went to other inhabited islands. And in particular, and went to many of them, and many people have been harmed. But I'll talk for a second about one which is Rongalap, which is the closest and was directly on the line of the fallout, a hundred miles away. And people there experienced radiation sickness, acute radiation sickness. The the um, the test was done early in the morning. By middle of the day, the fallout had arrived on Rongalap. By evening's time, basically everybody on the island was very, very, very sick. Do, do you know what kind of illness? Yeah, they were. It's it's we, we call it uh, acute radiation sickness. Um, they were vomiting. They were nauseous. Um, they had all kinds of pains. Their skin was peeling. Their hair was falling out. It's basically if you, there is a level of radiation, right, that you can get exposed to and just die, right? Um, and then they were in this kind of range where you survive, but you've now been impact. You not only experienced acute radiation sickness, you're also now much more likely to get cancer 
um, at a later point in life, and they had kind of a large, this population on Rongelop had this very large increase in cancers. But my point is that you could be in um, a rural area, right, but on the path of the fallout, and you could get very, very sick. Um, and, and um, you know, the situation, it isn't like it just... You're going to be okay as long as you're not in New York or you're not in D.C., right? It's going to be pretty much bad everywhere. 